Hey everybody, welcome into the Red Earth Production Studios for another edition of YBM Cast with Matt and Brian, powered by Game 7 Baseball. Matt, how you doing? Good. Baseball started. Everybody's happier. That's good. Kevin, how are you doing? I'm great, guys. How about you guys? Doing well. We got Kevin Mulder on the show here, and uh, we're going to be talking some high school baseball, some prep stuff, and we got a lot of stuff going on here on the show. But if you're joining us today and uh, you've not already subscribed, please take a moment, click the subscribe button, please. Hit that dinger because that's what we do here. We hit dingers. And uh, (laughs) get all your updates, get all your notifications for upcoming episodes of YBM Cash. You don't want to miss it. Uh, as I said, today we got uh, Kevin Mulder with PBR Missouri on the show, and we're going to be talking some high school baseball rankings, everything going on here. Kevin has uh, has taken over. You took over, what, uh, a year ago? Is that correct, A little, Kevin? A little less uh, – last June. Last June. Last, last June, last summer. And I'll tell you what, and I'm going to say this. I said this to him before we came on. I – the PBR Missouri has exploded, and I've been watching the the website and the stuff since Kevin's taken over. I think you're doing a great job, fantastic job. I, I think it's just everything is changing, it's growing, it's expanding, and I'm enjoying watching it. Well, I, I appreciate it. We've been working hard at it and, um, you know, trying to get all, to know all the players. And it was kind of a, a unique time to jump into this with uh, – you know, not having high school baseball last year. Uh, so it was almost like starting from scratch. And that was one thing, talking to a lot of the high school coaches this year when you're t- setting up for the season and doing some of the preseason stuff, you really don't know because these teams haven't played in forever. Um, so it, it really is, um, you know, an interesting time. But uh, I'm, I'm fired up that we've gotten the start and have had relatively good weather uh, the first three weeks of the season here. Yeah, don't jinx that. <laughs> yeah, right. Jinx it, that. It, it already <laughs> rained last night. We're good. Right. right. <laughs> and I think it was funny because I, I saw a tweet. I was follow, I follow Fort Zomalt West on uh, Twitter, and they said, we're going to start the game early, guys. <laughs> 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 Trying to get it in before the rain. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, and kudos to, to Kevin uh, to piggyback what you were just saying. You've done a great job. I think um, – Nothing against the people that were running it prior. I just don't think they had enough help to really get Kansas and Missouri fully represented. And you've done a really good job of really representing Missouri, the kids, the teams. Um, and we're really excited to see where it goes because I think in the first year you've done a lot. Absolutely, man. Um, positively, you've done a lot. So, um, but hey, let's dive into this. Let's get. Let's do uh, it. Let's get going. Uh, rankings are out. Schools have been playing, um, and right out the gate, we've got uh, looking at PBR's rankings, class five and class six. You guys combined for rankings, um, and you got Fort Zumalt West at the top at number one. And I'll first let, of all, let me ask you this, Kevin. And I'll I was going to let him talk about Zumalt West. Yeah, but how did you? Uh, um, what? You know, you got class five and whatnot. How how often are your rankings come out? That was my question. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, we're, we do them once a week. So I'm going to put once them out at, at every Monday. Um, Monday's games do not count in the ranking for so it, like games through Sunday, which most teams don't play Sunday games. So that that kind of makes for a nice break. I kind of reshuffled the deck on Sunday evening and then look at them again on Monday. Uh, see how see how many mistakes I made. Reshuffle it again a little Monday, and then put them out um, sometime uh, Monday morning and early afternoon. Okay, <clears throat> go ahead, Matt. I'm sorry. Well, no, that's, that's, that's that's good to know. Um, so Fort Zumwalt West, number one. They just like a lot of the teams that are in the top five, at least. I know top ten. Um, early on in the season, they haven't shied away from good competition. No. So I just want to hear your thoughts on Wes because they're off to a great start and obviously they're very talented. Yeah, they, they are. Um, you know, that was a team that started outside the top 10 to, to start the season. Um, 
and they were, I think they were on my on deck list. So I ranked the top 10 and then there's uh, 10 to 12 schools that I'll, I'll put on the on deck that, uh, you know, it aren't necessarily in a specific order and they were um, on that on deck uh, thing. And, and I have been really impressed with them. They have, uh, you know, it's not, they have the gaudy record, but they have played, I mean, the murders are out there. Uh, they've played a bunch of good competition. Uh, they've won, a, um, you know, an early season tournament. They've, they have really impressed. They've got a nice um, veteran group of guys. Um, and I, I think w- there's little doubt that uh, they are deserving of being that uh, number one seed or number one spot right now. I know when we talked with Eric, he was our first coach we had on our GAC preview. Uh, he was kind of, you know, he was excited about what he had and felt good about what he had. He was, I think, uh, cautiously optimistic, right? Yeah, he, well, he also knew what everybody else has. Yes. And which, but, I mean, like, Zumo West, they, I mean, they've beaten Howell. Yeah. And, you know, Howell's ranked uh, number three right now. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, in regards to Zumo West, they've got some, they don't have the top, you know, they don't have that player that's a top five, top ten ranked kid. So, what are your thoughts in regards to like what are they doing? I should say that's you know giving them early success. And that's a great point. So um, they don't like they don't have now they have a bunch of guys that are really really good players, um, but they don't have the kid that is the um, the so called. Um, superstar or the kid that, uh, you know, go is going to big school you or, or, or whatever. Um, but this is a great example of what it takes to be successful in high school baseball. What they have is a bunch of kids that are going to end up being good college baseball players. A couple of them might end up getting to play beyond that. Uh, but they don't have that junior sophomore that's, uh, you know, going to some top five school in the country for college or uh, is necessarily getting prof- scouted professionally right now. But there, there's no so- soft spots in that lineup. Um, they roll out four quality starters and have good relievers. Um, th- and that that's going to win. They're, you're not going to catch them on a day when, oh, they're not throwing their top guy because they got – they got three or four of those guys that can roll out there that are really, really good. Wow. That's what is known as a complete team, right? It's a team. Yeah. It's a good team. Team baseball. So let's, uh, let's go outside a little bit here. I've heard a lot about um, Lafayette. I uh, heard a lot of people talking about it. Haven't seen them yet, but a lot of people say they're at that top, solid across the board, pitching everything. They have that kind of team. Um, what are you seeing with Lafayette? Yeah, Lafayette. I saw them earlier. Um, I believe they won the Oakville, uh, uh, man, the Oakville Melville tournament. Um, and if I'm off on the name of that tournament, I apologize, (laughs) but I saw them match up versus a really strong Wimberg team. Uh, and, and they took that game. Um, yeah, that, that's a, uh, that's a talented lineup. Is Lafayette has some big names. Um, and they have uh, Kramer going to Ole Miss, and they they just lead him right off. So you got you got to deal with trouble right off the bat. They got a uh, a young kid, a sophomore that um, that I like a lot. A left handed hitter named Trip Johns. It's a big, strong dude um, that can run the ball out of the yard. Um, they got the pitching. They got a, a Luke Flata going to OU, uh, Gavin Oswald going to Mineral Area. Two lefties that are kind of front line guys. Um, and, and I, I'm not naming everyone there, but they they are a talented group. They will be reckoned with, uh, and they'll be there kind of towards the end of the year. I would bet. So we're definitely going to see uh, Lafayette, Zumwalt West, with the way their teams are structured. They're they're going to be there to the end, aren't they? I mean, how you far would, they go? Think, 
Yeah, you, you would sure think you know Missouri high school baseball playoffs are crazy because it, mm-hmm. it's one one loss and you're out. So it just takes you know you run into that guy, you run into that one pitcher, um, and and he can end your season. But uh, yeah, if you had your money down, those would be two good ones to have it on. Well, yeah, then I mean, <clears throat> I mean number three, Howell is. I mean, those I think those three teams could probably at any point interchange. <laughs> I mean, along with CBC, um, you can add some Liberty, Liberty schools North too, or Liberty. Yeah, I mean, you look at the top six in so, general. Yeah, Francis Howell, that's a veteran laden team as well, and they got they do have a big arm, Alex Pipes. Um, they could shut down anyone in the state. Uh, all those teams are well coached, obviously. Uh, you know, but. Coach Perkins over there at Howell's won a number of state championships. He knows what he's doing. So there, yeah, that's not an that's not a team you'd want to play in the postseason uh, at, at all. <laughs> and I think that's what it's leading up to, man. Um, and that's what is impressive, in my opinion, about Missouri baseball. I know you hear about Texas and California, Florida, Georgia, you know, Oklahoma, but man, Missouri baseball is really good. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, just look at the it, talent. Yeah, it, it, it's strong. And I spent my first week um, over in Kansas City, and there's a couple teams in the, over there that are that are really good. Um, you know, Liberty, Liberty North, um, Park Hills, really strong. Blue Springs South is really good. Um, and I'm about to start branching off and kind of seeing some things in the middle of the state. Um, you know, I know Jeff City's got a really strong team and uh, like Springfield Catholic and Kickapoo and Willard. Those teams are good. Um, and, and there will be uh, some competition from around the state to, to deal with for sure. Uh, that's one we talked with uh, a couple of kids that when we were down in Springfield and that was one of the schools everybody brought up was Kickapoo. Um, so I think, uh, you know, and I haven't seen them, I haven't heard much other than that. We were down doing our winter workout tour. Um, Midwest Mavs have, uh, quite a few kids that play there at Kickapoo looking strong. Uh, so I think that's going to be an interesting one as well. Yeah, no, they, they are. And, uh, you know, Marquette who I saw yesterday and is a really, really strong team, uh, went down and played Kickapoo and, and came up on the short end, I believe. So, um, you know, and it's always interesting, like Blue Spring South was over here um, last week uh, playing in the Midwest Classic. And, you know, they they lost, they dropped a couple games to good teams. But how do you weigh, you know, those kids got on the bus, had to drive over three and a half hours, got off the bus, played baseball. They lost. So, they, they you know, it, it, there's they did an awful lot of back and forth and travel and uh, but you know what you can appreciate is they're going out playing good competition. It's it's like the Zoom Walt West thing. It's like, you know, you got to respect anyone that'll play high competition, and uh, that that's really good to see uh, and, and good for the kids when they get challenged and get to play the best teams in the state. Absolutely. Let's let's go down. Let's let's walk down a little bit to the small schools because this was a challenge for you, I'm sure, in rankings as we were kind of talking because the classifications did not come out until March 31st, and yeah. you'd had two weeks of baseball already. So, so that was a difficult process, wasn't it? It, it was extremely difficult, and. Um, yeah, like uh, we've done our rankings off five and six A group together, and what I, you know, what you consider a small school versus what you consider a large school, and they there was a couple surprises in there, um, and, and I'm not trying to get into uh, the politics of, of that uh, of the those mechanics and whatnot, um, but uh, yes, there's there are some really good small school teams. Some of them are now up in in, in five A. Um, you know, like Westminster would be an example of, I believe they're 4A in basically all their other sports, but they're playing 5A in baseball. Um, uh, that's a really strong team. They, they got one of the best, if not the best pitcher in St. Louis and Nick Moten, um, who is creating a lot of draft buzz right now, signed at Arkansas. Um, 
he had his first outing last Saturday, was 91-95, and Jeez. pounds the zone with strikes and has a couple good breaking balls, um, and they're deep. They got another pitcher going to Mizzou, Zach Guantano, a shortstop going to Tulane, Adam Ebling. Um, they got a kid going to Indiana State. Um, you know, they're, they're deep, and they got some young guys, too, that, that – are good players that are in the rank, you know, coming up and will be guys. Um, so it's a, that is a deep team and, and a, in a very strong team. Um, but that kind of fits that, what you're talking about is, well, are they a small school? Are they a large school? And Misha came out and finally said they're well, they're a large school. Um, now so (laughs) and i think that was kind of tough lutheran st charles came into that same we were talking about that earlier and they have been very good in their class their lower class for quite a while very good team yeah um so it's uh you know it's exciting because you're going to get to see them play um against the 5a schools and um you know, so that that'll be fun to to watch them compete and and kind of like I said earlier, you catch those teams on the right day, they can beat anyone. I don't care if it's a six A or a you know, uh, they can play with with about anybody. So um, it'll be fun to to watch that unfold. So now that the districts are out, um, starting to kind of look towards the future here, and there's a couple of districts for me personally, that I'm excited to watch. For one, at the 6A level, going off of early rankings, early teams, you've got District 4 mm-hmm. with Zumalt West. You've got Hickman. You've got Liberty. You've got Timberland. And you've got Troy. That one stands out because that's – and there's, you know, you have other schools in there, but I'm just saying early on who's doing well, these are schools that stand out. And then the other one is District 3 with Howell and Lafayette, both in Eureka. Yeah. In that district. I mean, Marquette's in there too. So there's, I mean, it's not going to be easy getting out of your district. No, those teams are going to be battle tested. That that's for sure. I mean, those two you you probably hit on the the. You know, I'm looking at this District Three right now, and I, you know, Eureka. I haven't even got to them yet, but they they can run out multiple 90 mile per hour arms at you. Um, so you you know, the, I, I, and there's so much season to play out, but they're most likely not going to be the one seed in that. Uh, district and whoever plays them on opening day, it, it, depending on what the coach decides to do, is going to run out. The, you're going to face a really strong arm uh, right out of the gates. And Francis Howell Central, same thing. I wouldn't mm-hmm. expect them to be the one seed there, uh, but they got a couple left handers that can shut you down. Um, so that, you know, Marquette's lineup is super deep. That That is a uh, that is a stout district. Whoever wins that, um, you know, that's almost like a state championship right there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, let me ask you about, you know, you were looking to come back to some of these schools because uh, I know Zumwalt North has been pretty good for uh, the last few years. Where are they at right now? I haven't seen them, haven't heard much about them. Did they, have they kind of fallen off the board there? Yeah, they got, they have a guy, um, I'm pulling them up right now. They they're they're um, not having the strongest season right now. Um, I am pulling them up. Well, they're also in a tough district because they're in District Four, which is with Zumalt West, Holt, no, Hickman, I th- Liberty. I thought North was in District Three. No, no, is it four? Zumalt okay, North my fault. My fault. Four. I thought they were in District Three. Now District Four is not easy either. No. You're talking about Troy, Timberland, Liberty, right? Zoom out west. I mean, Liberty can beat anybody on any day by just throwing one guy. So they're uh, they're having a tough year right now. It looks like they're one and eleven. Um, you know, wow. They they have a couple guys. Uh, they have a pitcher that's going to Truman State. That's a good one, um, Jackson Mitchell. Um, and, and they have a couple of nice. Uh, hitters as well, but it looks like things haven't come together for them uh, quite yet this year. Yeah. And you're in that, in those districts, 
you, you're going to get beat a lot if you're not on top of your game. Well, that district, any of those districts, maybe yeah. you lose, you're done. Jeez. But the point is that with any of these schools, like District 4, District 3, you're talking about how Central has a has a guy. How Eureka, uh, Lafayette, I mean, Liberty, like any Timberland has a 2023 lefty that I, th- I think can beat anybody. Um, there, there's no question. And Adam Hackman. <laughs> I mean, he's a guy. Yeah. He's a dude. So the point is, I'm excited to watch these two districts specifically because first round, everybody is going to be, every game's going to have a dude. Because you're going to have yeah. to. You can't, who are you going to save? You might not get past the first game. And, and that's a great point because that's what we talked about with, uh, with Coach Perkins. And he said, you know, he is, I've, I've, I've thought about that. A lot of people do that. He says, and he said that. He goes, I don't think you'll be able to this year. He said that himself. Because you may just not, you may not make it to districts. If you don't go out there and put your dude on the, on the mound, you're going to get beat. Yeah, and asking me, Kevin knows he's seen them all. Yeah, no, it, it, there's anything can happen, and that's the scary thing about Missouri high school playoff baseball is it's it's one it's the bad fun night. thing. It's the fun that thing guy. about high school baseball, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> one and Absolutely. done. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but I mean, and then you look at five A, and I mean, think of the the poor team that gets has to play Westminster game one or two. Right. You know, in in District 3. I mean, come on. Right. But it goes back to our point here at the beginning is there's a lot of dudes. And, I mean, we haven't even really expanded to the other side of the state and the dudes on on the Kansas City side or the southwest side or the southeast side. This is mainly just, you're talking about St. Charles County, Warren County, St. Louis County. Well, and I've always talked about that. And to me, the GAC is stacked. As far as a conference, the the Gateway Athletic Conference here in this area is probably the deepest conference I've seen across the state, period. I, I would agree with that for this year. Um, it, it's interesting. It, it always goes in waves. Um, there's no question um, that, that that conference year in, year out is at the very top. Um you know, there is some good stuff in Kansas City. Kansas City has some really nice young players in particular. Um, Liberty North is going to be one of the best teams in the state for the next three years. They got a couple of young guys. Uh, they're some of the best players in the country um, in that sophomore class uh, and freshman class. They they got a, a sophomore going to Arkansas named Tate McGuire, and they got two freshmen that are on varsity. One's going to Oklahoma already named Bo Jonas and another one named Trey Schneider um, that are very highly regarded and will end up at a, you know, end up, you know, doing big things in high school. So that's a team you'll hear Liberty North's name for the next four years, basically. Um, Yeah. So it it does, it comes and goes in in waves class by class I've found, or I believe. Um, But yeah, you can count on, uh, uh, the the gateway to be to be right there year in year out for sure. So who are we missing here, Kevin? We've touched on a lot of teams. Um, in your mind, uh, a couple schools that uh, you you would think are you know really to look out for moving forward. Well, um, you know, are you talking St. Louis area or just across the board? We haven't, you know, there wherever so it doesn't that. matter. Yeah. You know, there's, um, you know, Viani High School. We haven't mm-hmm. touched on them at all. Um, that's a powerhouse that mm-hmm. they can, <laughs> you know, they got the pedigree, they got the talent, uh, they got the coaching. They, uh, you know, they can, that's another team you don't want to play. Brock Daniels is, um, you know, kind of the headliner of that offense. They got um, some some decent pitching to go with it. Uh, they're off to a, a pretty good start uh, a, as well. Um, we touched on Timberland. Um, that That's another team that's off to a really good start and has one of the most talented pitchers in the area. Uh, and Adam Hackman, uh, now he's a sophomore, um, so he, he hasn't, you know, been through the ringer completely yet, but that's a very good team. Um, 
I saw Liberty Winsville. This is kind of noteworthy um, play the other day. Um, and Victor Quinn, who's known as a pitcher, and he is a pitcher, uh, tied the state home run record um, for home runs in a game. I saw him hit four home runs um, in, a, in a game. Yeah, it was a fairly impressive it. feat. Um, and they got a good team. You know, they got a shortstop. Connor Hutchins is mm-hmm. a hard, hard-nosed kid um, going to SEMO. Um they they got a uh, they got a solid group, and then obviously Victor himself when he's on the mound, um, you know that's one of the top arm strength pitchers in the country, uh, like nationally. I've talked to some cross checkers, national scouts, our our national guy with PBR. Um, there's only a handful of kids in the country that throw as hard as he does, and his last start in the first two innings, he was 94-97. He struck out the first six batters of the game. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's another group there that, uh, you know, you catch them on, on the right that they can beat anyone a hundred percent. Um, you know, it, it's so deep. Chaminade has a couple good, uh, right-handed pitchers, uh, brothers, in fact, Jack and Charlie Weber. Um, you know, so the, it is, it is really good. Um, just, just across the, uh, you know, across the board, there's some good, some good talent in our area, in our region or in our state. Very good. Very good. Do you have something? No, I'm just saying it's, we've said from day one that I think people need to get out and try to watch baseball games. And I think three, four, five years down the road, you're going to look back and say, you know, the 2021 spring, Look at the kids that were playing against each other, whether they're 22s, 23s, 21s, and just the talent of where some of these kids could end up in four or five years after their either their college career is over or they're starting their major league career, whether that's in the minors or pro ball. Obviously, there's a lot of time for now, but I mean, would you agree that you look back and you're going to say, look at all the talent that was here? There's no question. That, that was another t- thing I was just thinking about. We haven't even talked about CBC, who right. you could make a strong <laughs> argument. Is I mean, how many D1 arms do they have? It, it's impressive. And, and lineup wise, uh, you know, th- everyone's going to go play in college, basically. A um, couple of them are, quite a few are committed already uh, or signed. Um, but yeah, if you're talking big picture, um, you know, over the next couple of years, you're going to see a lot of these kids playing on TV uh, in college baseball. You know, you're going to watch them in uh, SEC games and uh, Missouri Valley and uh, Big 12. They're going to be playing across, um, you know, the country in college baseball, playing at a very high level. And, uh, you know, it, it, you never say, oh, that kid's going to make the big leagues. It's not a sure bet. Uh, but I would bet you that a couple of these kids probably will. I just couldn't – don't pin me down on which ones because it is uh, it is a little bit of a crapshoot. And, um, you know, but th- there is enough talent in our area that you feel good that some of these kids are going to break through. Very good. Well – as we're finishing up here today, uh, we want to uh, just say thanks for coming on, and we're we're looking forward. We're going to be bringing Kevin on on a regular talking baseball. What you got coming up, Kevin, with PBR? What's what's out there? What's for the future here? As as we as we're we're rolling through the season into the summer, um, I noticed you had up on your site. You're you got the uh, uh, rankings for the the 2023 kids up there. What's going on with PBR? So um, the the main thing I'm doing right now is I, I'm uh, I'm enjoying things. I'm getting out. And I'm going out and to watch as many high school baseball games as I can. Um, so we've we've done a pretty good job of that the first three weeks, and I'm looking forward to doing that uh, the rest of the season. Um, I'm gonna come out with our uh, 2024 rankings here short soon, uh, and you know it won't be overly expansive, but a couple couple names in the, in that 24 class. And, uh, you know, there's, it's, it's going to be a good class. That's the freshmen. There's, believe it or not, three of them already committed to major schools. Um, and then, uh, event wise, uh, I have something April 27th for our junior future games, which is kind of a neat thing. It's, uh, 
you know, our top seventh and eighth graders, um, you know, we, we definitely, we don't rank those guys or anything like that. That's, that's not the purpose of it. Uh, but it is to kind of just get an introduction with them. And, uh, we ended up selecting a, a group of guys and taking them to compete nationally, uh, for the state of Missouri and go compete, uh, in the middle of the summer, uh, down at Lake Point, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, and, uh, go compete nationally versus the other states with the best team we can put together for the state of Missouri. So that'll be a fun event and uh, kind of an eye-opening experience for the guys, the kids, and um, to go through that for really their their first time. Very good. Very good. Matt, anything yet? No, thanks a lot. I mean, yeah, obviously we'll, we'll talk on a regular basis, but appreciate all the information and the hard work. It's Absolutely. Exciting. Yeah. And we want to, we're going to be getting out and talking some more, uh, we're going to have Kevin back on next Thursday, talk some more rankings, see what's changed, right? Yeah, something will. <laughs> Every week. See where we're at. We'll follow along here. Uh, Kevin, thanks a lot. Hey, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Remember, uh, hit that subscribe button, hit the dinger, get your notifications for upcoming episodes. You don't want to miss it as we follow the high school baseball season here in Missouri with PBR Missouri. Uh, everybody, uh you pitchers, keep throwing strikes. You hitters, hit them where they ain't. There you go. That's good advice. We'll see Great you next advice. time. <laughs>